Rich Ryan Smith was a four-year letter winner in both baseball and football, earning numerous awards in both sports. On the baseball diamond, Ryan Smith was a three-time first-team all-conference honoree and three-time NAI all-district. He finished his career playing in 174 career games and recording a career 341 batting average. A member of SMSU's 1986 NEI District Championship team, he was named the team's most inspirational player all four years of his career and was named the team MVP in 1987. Ryan Smith played in 42 career games for the Mustang football program and was a member of the SMSU's first ever NEI playoff team in 1987. Rich and his wife Shauna have three children and live in Shakopee, Minnesota. Please welcome the newest member of the Hall of Honor, Rich Reinsmith. Thanks for the kind words, Gar. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank the, um, the committee for voting me in. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank Gary for presenting the word to me. Thanks, Gary. Well, when uh, I got the call from Kelly Loft, you know, you get so busy in your life, working and stuff and uh, with your family. You know, I got that call from Kelly. It's like, boy, stop, stop me right in my tracks. You just start thinking about all the great times you had here in the Southwest. And uh, a lot of great memories, a lot of great people I met here. You know, I came from, uh, I came from the East Coast of South Jersey. And uh, a, lot of my, a lot of my former uh, guys ahead of me in, played football and baseball. They, they stayed around South Jersey and uh, went to a couple small schools real close to home. And, and they always came back when I was a senior, always coming back and seeing us play. And I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want that. I wanted to, as an 18, 19 year old kid, I wanted to get away. And uh, to, to, to see the country, see, see, the, see the world, or this, this, this beautiful, um, I, I'd never been to Minnesota. But um, when Coach Gary Buer started calling me, I was out. Um, I was out playing baseball in the summer for an amateur team, and my mom always, he, she kept, kept kept telling me I get back from the game. She always said, you know, Coach G- Gary Buer kept calling, kept calling. I'm I'm very thankful that he did keep calling me, because um, you know, getting out here to to Marshall, it's a it's a long long way from South Jersey. And I tell you, coming from the beaches, uh, I'm a beach guy. I love, I love the ocean. And getting out here and, and uh, seeing all these corn, corn, corn fields and stuff, it was, it was eye-opening. It was. I, I mean, New Jersey's a small state. You can go from tip to bottom in about four hours. I mean, here, you know, driving up to Duluth, playing Duluth and Bemidji, you know, that's a bus ride. I was like, wow. But uh, there's a couple of coaches I want to thank on the football. You know, Gary Buer. And I look at Gary Buer. He was always around. He's a, he's a great family man. He was like a, a father figure to me. And uh, I just remember him bringing all his children around, you know, to practices and, and his, in his um, office and stuff. And I was like, boy, someday, uh, you know, I'm going to be a dad. And then I had uh, my linebacker coach, uh, Mike Friedel. He was a defensive coordinator and my linebacker coach my freshman year. And then he, I only had him for one year. And then I had Coach Ed Meyercourt, great man. He was our D-line coach, but then he turned out to be my, um, my defensive coordinator later in my years here. And I wanna, then I had, uh, I wanna thank Mike Sterner. I had I had Mike Sterner for a year I think for as a linebacker coach with uh, I played with his um, son John and, uh, and I want to thank the um, the late R.A. Colvin I know when I came here as a freshman 19 year old kid 
I tell you, that guy, he made you grow up quick. He wasn't going to show you the way. You had, to, you had to find your own way, you know, being out here as a young kid. That freshman year, boy, I mean, long way from home, homesick. But uh, he was a tough cookie to crack. And after that first year, once you got to know him and he got to know you a little bit, he kind of really welcomed you into his world. And he was a superman. I, we miss him dearly. And uh, I, got, I got some other things I want to talk about from the football. My first football game out here, my freshman year, I had, had a chance to uh, fly out to um, Ogden, Utah to play Weber State. And uh, what a beautiful place that was, and what, what a football game. All I can remember, you know, talking to Mr. Buer, I, I was always asking him, I go, well, what kind of team do you have there? What, I mean, what kind of offense, what kind of defense do you run? And all he said was, uh, you know, we throw the ball. We throw the ball a little bit. And I'm like, all right, well, we throw the ball. I tell you one thing, that first football game, I think it started at 8 o'clock at night, and uh, we are going in at halftime. It was like a th 11 o'clock at night where it was at halftime because we threw the ball at least 69 times, and, and we were state through at 73. <laughs> and uh, as a linebacker from the conference I grew up in, most teams maybe threw it 15 to 20 times, and it was more of a pounding, pounding uh, offense. But, boy, I never covered so many wide receivers or, or tight ends coming across the middle or, line or wide receivers backpedaling. I was like, man, you, you know, you had to be in shape because there was a lot of I, – that I, was the longest football game I ever played in my life. I mean, it, it was past midnight when the game got over. And I was like, this is college football? It, it was great. I, I was like, this is big time, you know, flying in to Weber State, Ogden, Utah. It was great. And then we, you know, later, a couple years later, we played in uh, Colorado. And I remember warming up for the game. It, was, it wasn't that bad out. And uh, we go in uh, before the game. We went back in the locker room. We come back out of the locker room. It's, it's, snow, it's a big snowstorm. But it was like a, it, it felt like, you know, it wasn't that cold, but it was snowing. And it snowed the whole game. And I remember our, our, we had a great running back. Shad Peckinpah had a great game that game. And, uh, and there's some other things I need to talk about. Uh, my, my senior year, in 80, 86, I, 86 I, I, I broke my ankle down in Drake. It was a second game, and I figured that was my senior year. My, my, my career is going to be over. But somehow I got, a, I got, I got the red shirt my, that year, and, I, and it turned out to be a blessing because uh, I'm going from the worst day of my life, breaking my ankle. And I remember that long bus ride coming back. And I remember R.A. Colvin said, oh, don't worry about it. You're fine. You can walk on it. And I'm like, I, don't, I can't walk on this. I, this is not, I can't put no weight on it. And then the next day, I remember coming. Uh, he said, come on in and get some ice the next day. I think it was a Sunday. I come in there, and, and the doors were all locked up. And old R.A. was out pheasant hunting. <laughs> And that, that's typical of R.A. because, you know, he loves his hunting. And then my, 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 my um, baseball coach on Monday took me to the doctor, Stevie Joe Burton, and it was broke. And they had to do surgery right there that day. He said the doctor, there was a good doctor in town, and he did surgery. And I wanted to get it done soon because I knew baseball was coming up. I wanted to be able to play baseball. But um, that was... Uh, Good old time. I'm, and then after I got the red shirt, I came back on my my 87th year. That was the year that we had a great team that year, and um, that was a team that got inducted a couple years ago. We were like eight four and one, and we I played with some great teammates that year. You know, Bruce Oxted, he's my my roommate. Bill Springman, Stenzel. But um, that was a super year. I mean. Sitting back, you know, we had Steve Alzinga as a quarterback. He set all kind of records that year, and um, James Ashley. You know, I'm a linebacker. I, I didn't even sit in the bench. I, I made sure I watched that offense because it was, it was special. There were some great, great teammates, and it was fun. It's always fun when you're winning. And that, 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 was, the, that was my senior year, and then we got to play the only, only um, Southwest Minnesota State 
playoff game out here at Mackey Field. Ended up playing Mesa College out of Colorado. And we, we hung in there at halftime, but then uh, they had a guy named Tony Martin. Ended up playing for the Miami Dolphins. That was one of the best football players I ever seen on a football field. He was our quarterback, and boy, I tell you, he must have got chewed out at halftime because we couldn't stop in the second half. <laughs> Next thing you know, you watch him on Sunday playing. And I got a little story I want to tell you about my friend Gary. You know, I was a freshman linebacker. I, you know, Mike Friedel was always telling us, uh, you know, defense, linebackers, we rule this field. We, we, whatever happens on the, on the practice field, you know, we, we take charge. And uh, we were in the Pascal drill, seven on seven, because our offense is, you know, they, they always had to get, you know, the receivers had to get their routes down and stuff. And our coach is telling, uh, he's telling us it's live. We're in shoulder pads and helmets and shorts. And he's saying, hey, they come across the middle, you light them up. And I'm like, all right, 18, 19 year old kid. I'm like, well, I'm trying to make the team. I'm trying to show my coach what I can do. And Gary was a tight end. And uh, he came across the middle and I kind of I kind of lit him up pretty good. And, and I, I'm pretty sure he, he thought it was just gonna be tag out because that's what his coach was telling him. <laughs> so he, while he was bending down, picking up the, the ball, he gave me one of them quick, quick, um, quick elbow to the gut, knocked the air right out of me. He's like, boy, that's how they play out in New Jersey, huh? a little cheap shot. And I'm like, well, I'm just trying to, I'm just doing what my coach is telling me. And then, you know, after, after practice, I got to, I didn't know him beforehand, but got to talk to him afterwards and in the locker room and afterwards and just, uh, I hear you play baseball. And he was the only, team, only, only player on the football team that played baseball, so I was like, I'm gonna play baseball here too. And, and uh, next thing you know, 30 years later, he's still living in Chocopee. I played amateur baseball with him and his brother, Mike Tobin, you know, gave it up about four or five years ago. But 30 years later, I'm still here. And I see them guys almost every, not every day, but mostly all the time. Uh, and it's, you know, Gary and Tom Schlepper and Juan Mitchell. It's pretty special because Mike, I got three kids, and uh, Juan Mitchell's he's a basketball coach up in uh, girls basketball in Shakopee, and he's he coached both of my daughters, and I got a freshman now playing for him, and it's pretty special as 18, 19 year old kids growing up. Now I, now our kids are friends, they're interested in the same thing as athletics as we are, and. And it's pretty special sitting back watching them, watching him coach my kid now. And same thing with Tom Schlepper. He's coaching my son in baseball. All the, all, the, all the years I competed with these guys, and now it's pretty awesome. It's like a, it's like a whole cycle. It's like I played with these guys, now they're coaching my kid. But, um, and, uh, and I, now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, baseball. Um, Jim Denovan, I remember walking into his office and just saying, hey, I, I play baseball, I'm third baseman. I was a shortstop and a pitcher in high school, but then I outgrew that. I was like, well, I'm not going to be trying to watch my weight to play shortstop here because you know, I have to lift weights to get ready for being a linebacker. And he's like, you know, he got talking to me and, well, He's like, if you're good enough, you know, you can, you can play. To, you can play baseball if you're, you know, put your hard work in. And we did put our hard work in. It was fun. I remember my freshman year, we were heading down to Missouri. You know, we're we're practicing on these hardwood floors in the gymnasium, and uh, you know, you drop the cages a hit. You can do all your your drills that you can do up here. And the, the teams down south, they're out playing every day baseball, but. But we worked hard, our pitchers got their throwing in and we got our hitting in. But I remember going down to Missouri, we went there, I went there my first two years and then we ended up going to Austin, Texas, Texas my, my next two years. But I remember we got down to Missouri and we were staying in these army barracks. And I just remember how cold they were when you get up in the morning and it was like, and, and we get there and knowing our luck coming from three foot of snow, I was just waiting to see grass. And uh, we get down there and it's raining. And, uh, and I remember 
we're, you know, I know our coach wanted to play bad, and uh, you guys probably don't know this, but um, he, he's got more, more, um, more tricks up his sleeve than just being a coach. I remember Gary goes, hey, Rhino, hey, take a look out here. He, take a look out here. And I, I look out the barrack window, and I was like, what the heck is he doing? I'm looking, and next thing you know, I look out there, the whole, the pitcher's mound was up in flames. And the, and the, pitcher, or, or the catcher's box was up in flames because there was puddles. And he put gasoline out there, and he lit the, lit the, um, the home plate and pitcher's mound up in, up in uh, flames. Here's a must have been a 10 foot, 15 foot flame out there just to try to dry it up so we can play. And that was, that was pretty, I was like, this, I said, it's pretty special. So we ended up playing that day. We ended up playing. But I had Coach Dediman for two years in baseball, and I had Stevie Joe Burton my final two years. And all I wanted to do is thank, when I was a freshman, all the upperclassmen took me in pretty, they, they, they welcomed me on the team. So that was, that was very nice. Um, but I, I, another thing I want to talk about is Marshall. The people, the people from Marshall community are amazing. I remember coming out here before fall camp. My mom and dad wanted to see where Southwest State, State was and where they were sending my kid. But um, Going into Perkins in the morning, people open the door, good morning, how are you? And just just very nice people. And that won me over real quick. And I knew my mom and dad were, they, they knew I was in good hands out here. And I'm, you know, I'm still here. I mean, I never went back. You know, all my family's out east, I miss them. I wish I could see my mom and dad more, but I try to see them two, two times a year, but. I'm just very f fortunate they, they can make it out here today. Here's a couple other people I want to say some nice things about. I want to say some, um, Rosie and Joe, the late Joe Schlepper. You know, me and Juan, Juan was from Delaware and I'm from New Jersey and uh, a lot of times the kids can always go home for, for their, you know, the holidays and stuff and I couldn't get home that much. Uh, you know, Christmas time I did, but Rosie and Joe Sr., they took me in like a, like a son. And it was, it was, it was, like I would never ever forget that. Karen and Dara Wiener, same thing when I played for the Marshall A's. And um, just some special people, Daryl. And I want to thank, you know, Wayne Cook, you know, always um, sending, uh, sending all the press clippings back to my mom and dad back east. He always did a wonderful job. But it is pretty special when you walk around the, the old gym. I remember when I was a freshman, I always seen pictures on the wall. You know, Lionel, Bolden, Darrell. And I'm like, man, you know, Danny, Danny Lee. I was like, boy, they got some good, good players out here, good athletes. You know, they, they always had their, you know, stats on the board. And I was like, man, that'd be great to, to get there someday. But you know, you put your hard work in, and you will get there. But there, there were guys I looked up to. I never got to play with you guys, but I tell you, it would have been, it would have been a treat. I got Daryl to coach me. And that, that was awesome. But after that, that time, um, we came out here to see the school, and then two weeks later, fall camp started, and I remember getting dropped off at the Philadelphia airport, and. Um, that's when you can go in and say goodbye to your kids right by the gate, not like it is today. But I remember getting on that plane, I was walking down that, that runway to get on, the, the, um, get on board and my dad yelled at me, he said, hey Rich. You know, I turned around and he's like, he's like, you're gonna, you're gonna end up, you're gonna end up burying a farm girl out there. I looked at him, I turned around and I looked at him, I was like, ah, I'll be back in four years, don't worry. But I ended up marrying a farm, farmer's daughter. My wife, Shauna, over there, she lives in Ballotton. And uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I don't know, he must have knew something, but.
And I want to thank my uh, brother-in-laws for coming. My nephew, Marcy, thank you. And lastly, lastly but not least, I want to thank my mom and dad for making the, the trip out here and supported me all my life. From when I played when I was a kid, always taking me in my games. And uh, it's just, it's, it's special. And thank you for flying out and watching me my first football game out in Ogden. And then they flew out in St. Cloud and watched, they flew out on a, they surprised me and they came out and watched me play in St. Cloud one day. And I, I seen them before the game and, and in the fourth quarter they had a, they waved to me and said they had, they had to go catch the airplane. But it's pretty special coming out here in one day to watch me play ball on, on, a, on, a, on a Saturday afternoon. I'll never forget it. So thank you very much for this honoree and all the other people going in today. Thanks very much. And the volleyball team, it's special going in as a team. I went in as a the 87 football team. It was great. But um, thank you very much.